plan for reconstruction. Pretty lenient on the south. Oh yeah, why is it so lenient? Because he's a southerner, absolutely. He wants the southern states back into the union. Now he has his three pieces. He has Lincoln's 10% plan. He says the southern states have to withdraw their secession and they have to accept the 13th Amendment. Now, this is a pretty lenient plan. It's pretty easy on the South. Who do you think this plan upsets? Who was it? Mm. The Union, sure. What about some very powerful individuals? Who else might be upset with this very lenient plan? Congress, Congress has their issues with this as well. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to build upon where we left off last time, and today we're going to talk about Congress's plan. Now, remember, when we first started Reconstruction, we were talking about how there are three big plans that emerge. Lincoln has his plan because he's the president. When he's assassinated, his plan dies with him. Now, Johnson's going to pick up his plan, at least the 10% plan and add some more cherries on top. Congress's plan is very different. Congress has a very different view on the South. Congress wants to punish the South. They want to set a precedent for if when any other state leaves the Union, it's not going to be easy to come back. We're going to, in fact, make it very difficult. We are going to remind you that you're a defeated enemy, and we are going to treat you as such. Now, I just kind of want to ask this, because I always like this at this point. If you're one of these Republicans from the Union who fought the Confederacy, finally wins the war, do you kind of want to punish the South, too? Yeah. Let me say this, too. Do they kind of deserve it? Yeah. They're a defeated enemy. Treat them as such. Now, can you also make an argument that this is not the way to bring the South back to the Union. Yeah. So would you rather be nice to them, or would you rather punish them? Midway. Midway, okay. This is kind of the dilemma where we find ourselves, because we have this president who's so lenient, and you have Congress that wants revenge. Congress hates President Johnson. They hate his plan. They hate basically everything about him. He's a Southerner, he's a Democrat, he wants to give the South trillions of dollars to rebuild, and Congress says, not so fast. We have power here as well. They're gonna make their own plan. Now their plan is gonna be a little more complex than what we have seen previously. Their plan is gonna include four big parts. The first thing that they're gonna do in Congress is they're going to create the 14th Amendment. Now, in order for an amendment to be created, it has to first start in Congress. They write it out. They make it. Then they vote. But to make an amendment is hard. It takes two-thirds of both houses of Congress to agree. Now, I should ask at this point, we haven't brought the Southern states back yet. So who controls Congress? Which political party? Republicans. Republicans. They have almost every single seat. Are they going to be able to get two-thirds vote here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Next step is you've got to send it off to the states. Who are the states at this point? The North. The North. The Union. So they send it off to the states. Do you think they're going to have enough support to get this passed? Oh, yeah. Should be pretty easy. So now i got to ask, what does the 13th Amendment do? abolishes slavery. 14th Amendment makes these newly freed slaves citizens. Now I also kind of need to ask this. If you're in the South and now you have Congress saying your former slaves are now citizens with equal protection of the law as you have. Is this a little tough for the southern states to accept? Yes. If they were states at this point, if they were back in the Union, would they have supported this? No. no. 
So we just made it happen without the southern states. You lost the war. This is going to happen whether you like it or not. Is this pretty tough on the South? Sure. Next thing, Congress says, we're going to make certain that the southern states comply. We are going to pass the Civil Rights Act of 1866. Now, we're going to see going forward, there are several different Civil Rights Acts. This is the first one. What the Civil Rights Act of 1866 proposes is that no state will pass a state law depriving anyone of their civil rights. We are forbidding southern states from passing black codes. Now, I kind of get some different responses on this. Some of you have, maybe not. Have you guys ever heard of black codes, or also known as Jim Crow laws? Maybe sort of? Okay. What these are, are laws that are overtly designed to segregate the races, to keep them apart. Now, I will show you guys some examples a little bit later on, but I bet you've seen those photographs of like the different drinking fountains, where it has labels on it that says like whites only, that sort of thing. That's a black code, that's a Jim Crow law. What this law does is it says Southern states, you can no longer pass those discriminatory segregation laws. Now we gotta play a little bit of a game here. Let's just say that a Southern state does pass a discriminatory black code. What can the federal government do? That's a good answer. What would they have to do to stop the southern states from passing those laws? Send in the troops. So another war on our hands. So let me ask, is this tough on the south? Yes. Is it hard to enforce? Yes. Yeah. Yes. We're going to come back to this a little bit later. Next thing, Congress says also, we have trillions and trillions of dollars to rebuild. We're gonna give a good chunk of money to a federal government agency, an agency called the Freedmen's Bureau. Now, I gotta ask, what do we see right here? Who do you think this is going to? That's all this money. <laughs> Man, you're right. <laughs> These newly freed slaves need some assistance. Now, as you guys were just arguing a little bit ago, you said, well, the newly freed slaves have nothing. They literally are just thrown into society. They have no idea how economics work. They have no idea how democracy works. They need all the help they can get. The Freedmen's Bureau is a government agency made up of people that are hired to go down to the South and assist these newly freed slaves getting on their feet. They are given all this government money to teach these newly freed slaves about democracy, economics, to give them some kind of very basic shelter, food, clothing. This is really the first large scale, enormous scale welfare program. Federal government money going to people to help get them on their feet. Now I should ask this. Do these newly freed slaves need this assistance? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's trillions of dollars, comparatively speaking. They need this help. Do the Southerners want to see this happen? No. no. So how do you think they see, how do, how do they perceive these government agents coming into the South to assist these newly freed slaves? Intruders, invaders, it kind of resembles the Civil War federal agents coming to the South to break apart the Southern way of life. Is this tough on the South? Yes. yes, in their perception. It gets even worse for them. Congress is gonna pass another act. This is going to be the Military Reconstruction Act. What this does is it tells these Southern states you're not even states. You're military districts. We are occupying you. 
Now we gotta connect a few dots here. First off, if we're saying that they're military districts and they need to be occupied, who's doing the occupying? The North, and what else? The Union soldiers. Does this look like the Civil War? Yeah. Yes. Is this embarrassing to the South? Yeah. Yes. Who do you put in charge of each of these military districts? Union, Union generals. Union generals. The same men that burned the South to the ground are now in charge. Now I should say this. If you're a Southerner, is this bad? Yeah. Yeah. This basically breaks down their way of life. It takes the southern states and divides them into these five military districts and tells them it's martial law. The military controls you. Even these generals that burned the south to the ground, they're now your leaders. How do you think the southerners take this? It does not go well. I will tell you this little story just real fast because uh, when I was in college, I dated this girl from the deep south. She was from New Orleans. And I'll always remember this because she was my friend for a while. And when we got to talking, she said, I can never date you because you're not a southerner. I was like, I don't, you're correct, I'm not. I'm from Colorado. She's like, uh uh. You don't know how to treat a Southern girl. That sounds like a challenge. She's like, no, no, it's not your fault. It's just Westerners don't get how it works in the South. Okay, I'll show you. So she agreed to go out with me. Guys, this is big life lessons today, okay? So here's the deal. I went to her house knowing I had to turn up the charm all the way to the top, it goes to 11. Turn it up so I go and pick her up at her house and give her flowers. Now, guys, you need to write this down, okay? Because I'm telling you secrets. The girls don't want you to know this, okay? Flowers. And she does this thing, okay? I'll always remember this. She just goes, that's so sweet. I don't know what it is about flowers, guys. I don't know. But that's good. Then, we're walking the car. Open the door for her. Okay, write this down if you need to. And she goes, that's so sweet. I'm like, yes, it is. Then, and this is big, guys, you have to do this, okay? We go to dinner, I'll pay for dinner. And she says, that's so sweet. I know, I'm sorry girls, I'm giving up the playbook here, I know, okay? <laughs> this is how it works. Be a gentleman. Now, I'll always remember this because after a while she said, you gotta come meet my dad. I'm like, mm -mm, I don't wanna do that. That sounds like a horrible idea. We went down to New Orleans, I kid you not, I show up there and we get to like the gigantic like white house with the columns, everything. And out comes this guy in a white suit, like Colonel Sanders. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is like, it's like a cartoon. Like really? And he goes, are you that Western boy that's been dating my girl? I'm like, what do you want to hear? I'm like, yes. And he goes, well, come on in. It's like, all right. Go inside. He goes, what bourbon do you drink? I'm like, uh, whatever. And he's like, nope, take a look. Has literally like 50 bottles of bourbon over there. He's like, what are you feeling like? I'm like, uh, that one? Like, I don't know. This is just the way things are done in the South. They have their own just kind of pomp and circumstance. And they raise Southern bells. In some of these military districts, these very proper, very prim Southern bells are walking down the street when the Union General in charge of their district is walking towards them, these very prim, very proper Southern Bells would spit on the Union Generals. Things are falling apart. This isn't how it works in the South. And now they're considered to be military districts. They're going to resist in their own ways. These states are told, you will accept the 13th and 14th Amendments. You will be military districts occupied by the Union Army, and Union generals are in charge. Does this sound pretty bad for the South? Does the South have any friends that can get them out of this mess? 
They've got one. 